in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The labor of all church workers shall never be in vain as our Father, the Father of all globally, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui gives us the Global Church Workers Conference live from Taraba State, Nigeria. All church workers and ministers globally to join hands with all ministers across Taraba State, Northern Nigeria from 17 to 20 November 2022. It's our time for triumphing in ministry, even in troublous times. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui will be ministering 8 a.m. daily from Jalingo, Taraba State, to the world, brass satellites, and all our social media platforms. It will be an avalanche of global expositions and revelations. Your labor will not be in vain. When we started the year 2022, you had hopes, you had desires, you had dreams, but suddenly, all over the globe, we read and hear of failures economically, politically, with climate change and security breaches here and there. And now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Today, the Lord is saying, weep not. All your tears are dried, because behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed. And it's confirmed that there's still one hope, one way, one solution, and one power that never fails. The power of Jesus Christ reverberates this November with GCK live from Adamawa State, Nigeria. The land of beauty set to beautify your life through Christ. As the covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui will touch down in Adamawa, Nigeria with a power that never fails. Healing, deliverance, salvation. November 24 to 29, 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT for Sunday worship service. Young people from all levels will be empowered for excellence at the Impact Academy on November 26, 2022 at 0600 hours GMT. Ministers and professionals will be empowered for breakthrough in ministry on November 25, 26, 28, and 29 at 0600 hours GMT. Our guest gospel minister is Bob Feetz. This is an avalanche of manifestation of the power that never fails for all life. Power will herald your celebration. Dr. William Kumui says, Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Praise the Lord. Tonight is the night of power. And I want you to I want you to realize there is no mountain that can stand when we pray. And tonight I want you to realize that all the problems you might have carried from the time you were born until this time that mountain can be removed. We're going to look at the Word of God, and after looking at the Word of God together, then we are going to pray, and the heavens are going to be opened. And I believe that you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name for the testimonies we have heard from various states in this nation. We thank you because you remain ever the same. As the members of the choir sang to us, our God is great, 
Our God is mighty. Great and marvelous are the, power, are the things that he can do by his power. And we come tonight expecting that that same God who has worked and moved mightily in the various places that we have been told, O oh Lord, we welcome you here tonight. We welcome your power here tonight. We welcome your anointing here tonight in Jesus' name. Do wonders in the midst of your people. Touch every life. Transform everyone. Take every disease, every infirmity, every sickness away in Jesus' name. Lord, tonight we want instantaneous miracles. So that as we mention the name of your dear son Jesus Christ, immediately and instantaneously, you'll do wonders in the life of everyone in Jesus' name. We believe that you have started already. And we believe that you'll do mighty things in our midst. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tonight, we are looking at the subject, How Big is Your God? Is He still big enough to open the Red Sea? Is your God still big enough to provide manna for about 3 million people every day for 40 years? Is your God still big enough to be able to destroy and bring down the walls of Jericho just by the obedience and the moving around of the children of God? Is your God still big enough to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to deliver from oppression? Is your God still big enough to provide for all needs in your life? How big is your God? In Psalm 62 verse 11. Psalm 62 verse 11. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. The power belongeth unto God. He has spoken. And we have heard. And the miracles and the testimonies have been multiplied. And we know. The power belongeth unto God. In Isaiah chapter 40. From verse 28, as thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. To them that has no might, he increases strength. Even the youths, youths without God, shall faint and be weary. And the young men that do not know the power of their God shall utterly fall. But they, the young, that wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run. And not be weary. They shall walk. And not faint. Matthew chapter 19. Verse 26. Matthew 19. Verse 26. But Jesus beheld them. And said unto them. With men this is impossible but with god all things are possible tonight we come together to pray not by the measure of what medical science can do 
but to pray with the omnipotence of God as the measure of our expectation. If we know how big God is, how great God is, then we know that God can do things that men cannot do, that medical science cannot do, that all the methods of men and all the things that people try to do in the development of civilization that we find in the world, what they cannot do, I believe God is still on the throne. And God can do more than you can imagine, more than you can express in your prayer, more than you can even believe for. There are seven areas I want us to consider as we think of the power of our God. And then, as we think of these areas, then we will pray. Number one, God's power to save. Number two, God's power to give us victory in temptation. Number three, preservation in persecution. Number four, provision of all needs. Number five, healing of all sicknesses. Number six, deliverance from demonic power. Number seven, protection in all circumstances. The Lord has given us so many promises because of our redemption because of our reconciliation with him and because of what christ accomplished on the cross of calvary that literally every need of the believer's life is covered by many promises of the word of god and god has never been known to fail god whenever he gives his promise he stands behind his word to fulfill that promise. Number one, I said we're considering God's power to save. There have been many people that have thought that they were irredeemable. That it was not possible for them to be saved. That they had gone so far in sin so deep in sin that there is nothing that can be done and yet the lord is so mighty that he manifests his power that he can save even a thief on the cross he can transform a publican he can change a person that had been changed by sin and he didn't know how he will get out of the scene. Because the power of God is so great that the Lord is mighty to save. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments, dried dyed garments from Bosra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his train. Who is he? Here is the answer. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. The Lord is mighty to save. You might have even written yourself up. You might have thought, I think I've gone so far that it will be impossible for me to retrace my steps. I think the chains of my sins bind me so terribly that if I try to turn this side, it is sin. To move this side, it is sin. And you might think that you are predestined to hell fire because you feel you have done things that cannot be forgiven. But here God tells us he speaks in righteousness and he is mighty to save. 
All you need to do is to turn away from the sin and say, Lord, although I do not have the power to set myself free, I do not have the power to live right, I believe you can make the change in my life. You remember the story of the woman that was taken in adultery in the very earth. And he brought this woman to the presence of Jesus Christ. And then Jesus, after hearing the accusations against the woman, he simply said, Any of you that has no sin can cast the first stone at her. They all went away condemned. And Jesus now spoke to the woman. Where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned you? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. He did not come to condemn. He came to save. And so he said, But now go and sin no more. You may not understand that simple sentence. If I tell you another story, you might understand. Peter saw Jesus Christ walking on the sea. And all the disciples took him to be like an evil spirit, a ghost. And they were afraid. And he said, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter said, if that's you, Lord... Bid me come on the water and walk like you. Do the incredible, the impossible. And Jesus uttered just one word, come. He left the boat, he came on the waters and began to walk. When he saw the wind boisterous, he became afraid as a natural man. Then he began to sink because of the fear. Immediately he cried out, Lord, save me. The Lord took him up and put him on the sea again. And both of them walked to the boat. On the strength of that one syllable word, come. On the strength of that word, go. See no more. That woman received the power, the divine ability. To go back into the same world in which she had lived before. And now live a righteous life, an upright life. And tonight, all the sins you might have been struggling with. As you receive the word in your spirit. Go and sin no more. I believe the power of God will follow that word in your heart. You will leave this place. You will walk on the sea. You will walk on all the problems of the past. And the sins that have captured you in the past. As you hear the word of the Lord. Go and see no more. The power of God will enter with that word into your heart. You will begin to live a victorious life. In Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25. Wherefore. He is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. No matter how far you have gone, what sins you have committed, what rebellion might have been in your life, no matter the indescribable things you have done that we cannot even begin to mention how deep the sins you have committed are. The Lord says, He is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by Him. Seeing He ever liveth to make intercession for them. How big is your God? Is He big enough to save? Mighty enough to save? Mighty enough to cleanse? Mighty enough to break? all chains and fetters of sin in your life number two god's power to give us victory in temptation there are common temptations there are some delicate uncommon temptations 
that sometimes a young person may find himself in and feel if I ever got out of this, it will be a miracle. That the temptations will be so calculated, so arranged by the devil, that the young person, the young Christian will say, can I overcome this one? Remember again how big your God is. Because you know now, it is not I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who died for me, who loved me, and gave himself for me. In Second Peter chapter 2, verse 9, The Lord knoweth, how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. If you are saved, if you have given your life to the Lord, you might be wondering, I will soon go back to my campus or to my family or to our village and I know the temptations are waiting me. Will I be able to overcome the victory I have here, the joy I have here, the decisions I've taken here? Will I be able to hold on and hold fast when I get back? Remember once again how big our God is. It is not you that will keep yourself ultimately. Oh yes, you have a part to play. You keep yourself from temptation. You do not foolishly and carelessly jump into evil. But ultimately, it is Almighty God that will keep you. And is He able to keep? Is He able to keep? The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. When the devil has planned it and he has thought, there is no way you can come out of this. That this one, you are going to fall into it. I'm telling you that you are not going to fall. Because the Lord knows how to keep and how to deliver from temptation. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18. For in that he himself suffered being tempted, he is able to succor, to sustain, to support. He is able to secure, to succor them that are tempted. If you feel that you are weak, if you feel that your flesh is a problem to you, if you feel that your environment is a problem to you, if you feel that the circumstances around you in your campus they are so tailored by the devil and by the agents of Satan and by the servants of the devil to give you terrible temptation that you may feel is beyond your ability to stand and withstand. Remember that God is able and he will support you. He will sustain you. He is able to succor them that are tempted. All you need to do when temptation comes is to remember once again how big your God is. He will deliver. Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 14. Seeing then, we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Tempted in all points. Flesh, yes, he was tempted. The lust of the eyes, he was tempted. The pride of life, he was tempted. He was tempted in all points like as we are, 
yet without sin. Let us therefore come timidly, come out boldly. Temptation is not sin. If you are being tempted, there's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be timid about. There's nothing to uh, feel, oh Lord, see, I'm being tempted. I must be a miserable Christian. It must be unfortunate for me. I must be a mediocre Christian because I'm being tempted. No, not at all. Temptation is not sin. Let us come boldly unto the throne of judgment, of rebuke, of condemnation unto the white great throne judgment no to the throne of of grace if you didn't hear this before that word grace means God's riches at Christ's expense it means that when you pray grace if you use the letters of that word grace it means God for G. Response that's for R. Abundantly for A. C. Completely. E. Exceedingly. When you have temptation and then you realize that Jesus Christ was tempted in all points as you are being tempted and yet without sin, you go to the throne of grace and you pray boldly. And God is going to respond abundantly, completely, and exceedingly. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Will he help us? He will. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There has no temptation taken you. But such as is common to man. Whatever temptation you are going through now, some people went through in the past and they overcame. Always tell yourself, this temptation, there has been a Christian before me. Somewhere in the world, at a particular time, that went through this. And by the grace of God, he overcame. And because others have overcome a similar temptation, I too, I can overcome. Then it says, but God is faithful. Who will not permit you, allow you, suffer you to be tempted? That what suffer is old English word. You must understand that the edition we have, which is the best edition actually, came out in the early part of the 17th century. That's why you'll find, suffer little children to come unto me. Does that mean beat them, make them suffer to come unto me? It means allow them, permit them to come unto me. That's the same sense in which this word suffer is used. He will not suffer you to be tempted. He will not permit you. He will not allow you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape there is no temptation that there is no way to escape if you open your spiritual eyes you will see there is a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it number one god has the power to save number two god has the power to keep us big to give us victory in temptation. Number three, preservation in persecution. Preservation in persecution. Now, when we talk of persecution, uh, yesterday you had a lot of questions. And um, our wonderful ministers gave us great, great, great answers. But uh, you might become afraid and begin to say, huh, if that is true, that some people have gone through persecutions like that, let me get ready, it is coming. It's not like that. You see, the Lord moderates the persecution. 
he knows the level of persecution that he will allow. He will not allow any persecution to come unto you that is beyond your strength. In fact, in the midst of that persecution, he will be strong and mighty within you. He will surround you and you will be preserved in that persecution. In Lagos there, we have one of our young sisters uh, she may just be passing out of secondary school now. When she was much younger, uh, she was, I think, in secondary two or three at that time. And we had a success camp for our young people. And she got there, and she got born again. And as she got born again, she got back home. Her life changed, appearance changed, dressing changed, everything changed. And uh, Mama said, what happened to you? And she said, there is Jesus living on the inside of me. He came into me and changed my life. Mama said, not in this house. And then she also said, let your senior brother come. He's going to knock that thing out of your heart. And that little girl, a teenager, uh, said, it's not possible. Jesus has come to stay. And so the little argument stopped and then the brother came back in the evening from work. And the mother reported and said, see your junior sister. She's gone to these born again, born again people. And now she's saying that not, none of this, none of this, none of that anymore. And the brother says, she, she doesn't mean that she can't say that. And so called the young lady and said, uh, what did I hear? And the sister, you know, in her little young faith, repeated the testimony. And then this man went to take something to really beat her. And not, uh, you know, not just a little weep, something very serious. Uh, what do they call it? Is it a tail of a cow or what? You know it. And uh, started beating this girl. It was terrible. And the Lord gave this little girl so much courage so much boldness that she said my brother you are beating me because Jesus came into me and I tell you that this Jesus inside me will never leave he said my brother if this thing is true and it is coming from God and it is coming from heaven I give you two weeks you will have what I have and that infuriated this man and he beat this uh, young girl again and the girl kept on saying i give you two weeks you are going to get the same thing the girl did not cry the girl did not say oh why did i give my life to the lord the girl kept on saying two weeks you will join me prophetic do you know that before two weeks this man got converted. And the same salvation, the same Christ that he was trying to beat out of that girl, he too added. And so the mother said, uh -uh, we told you to take the thing out of her and see what you have done now. In Lagos here, we had another young sister. She became converted. And as she became converted, the parents got unhappy, very angry about it. And so persecution began. And so they got a herbalist. They employed the services of the herbalist. And they said, whatever you can do, whatever is the cost, will pay you. Let this remembrance and memory of Jesus of salvation, then they said of deeper life, get away from her mind entirely. And the sister called the herbalist and said, don't waste your time. This is spiritual. Christ is inside. And Juju cannot affect Christ in the heart. And the Juju man began to waste his time trying to make Juju to take Jesus. Can you imagine? These people of the world are so dense and so unreasonable. They can't put two and two together to make four. And so this uh, Juju man began to make all the Juju, all the charcoal, don't you realize 
that nothing was ever created except by Jesus. Nothing was made. You cannot take what Jesus made, the paper, the ink, or the uh, leaf, or the bark of the something, or any animal, because Jesus made them all. You cannot take what Jesus made and use it against a child of God and not Jesus out of the heart. Well, to cut a long story short, as they were making juju, the more they were making juju, the more the sister was growing, growing in the faith and growing in the Lord and singing and rejoicing in the Lord. And eventually the juju man himself became sick. And when he was sick, he did all the juju that he could do and he couldn't get well. And this uh, beloved sister went to her and said, I told you, you see now, follow me. You'll get healed. And the juju man followed her and brought her to Deeper Life Church in Lagos. And the moment we mentioned the name of Jesus, the juju man became converted. And the parents, the parents of the lady said, Ah, juju man, you are following our daughter to church? We told you to take her away from church. The juju man said, I am one of them now. If you believe the Lord, the same thing will happen in your life. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you will condemn in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 43 from verse 1 and verse 2. But now thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Are you going to be afraid? Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name, thou art mine. What a wonderful thing that God will claim you as his own child. What a wonderful thing that God will say, do not be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. Verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Can I have a big amen? In Daniel, let us see this story, interesting story indeed. But you know, if these people did not stand against temptation, we will not have a story like this to read. It's because they knew how great, how big their God is. It was in a strange land. And you know, sometimes you discover on the campus, it's like you're in a strange place. Sometimes you discover in your little classroom, you may be the only believer there. And you may be the only one that is standing for righteousness there. And in that class, it's like you're in a strange place. Because the things they will say, and the way they will be going around doing things, and some of the lecturers is unfortunate. They will be clear and open enough, and they will say, uh, sit down there. You think it's only by sweating and reading that you pass exam? You think it's only by writing? You can write more than that, and we are waiting here for you. You better go and do what others are doing. And you begin to say, what are the others doing? Are they getting uh, more books from the library? Are they copying notes? Are they revising what they did the previous session? Ah, you don't know? Eh, but you have other classmates. Go and ask them. Then you begin to ask, what, uh, what does the lecturer mean? That except I do what others are doing. And that one will smile and say, you know, Give unto Caesar the things that belong to Caesar and to God. God is to your fellowship. God understands. Because this environment, they have said, these people, these, you know, they don't know God. They have said, except you surrender your body. Ah, is that what they mean? Yeah, that's what they mean? Or except you contribute and buy something and give to this one, give to that one. Except you do that. If you think you are going to take certificate, these people are wicked, you better do what they say. I'm telling you that 
you are going to pass your exam. You are even going to get distinction. All those things they are saying, we are going to prove to them that our God is greater than your department. All those lecturers that are sitting there and say, I am waiting, I am waiting, let them wait. In fact, I don't even want them to die. I want them to be alive and see what our God can do. It is, uh, uh, you know, yesterday, one of our uh, wonderful brothers on that side, during the question time, when the question did not come to, uh, the question time did not come to him by time, did you hear? He said, I am taking this thing by violence. Uh, that brother, you know, he was quoting from Matthew. The only problem is that the other people also wanted to take it by violence. But you know, here is the situation. That we know success is ours. Promotion is ours. Distinction. We are the people of God that ought to have it. And these people say that we are not going to have it. If it is going to take prayer and fasting, we are going to have it. That mountain will not remain in Jesus' name. But it's like temptation. And we are going to overcome that temptation. Look at Daniel chapter 3. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I set up? Ah, now, if ye be ready, at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sackbut, satri, and ulcima, and all kinds of music, and ye fall down and worship at the image which I have made well? I'll still give you a second chance. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. Now look at this question. And who is that God? Mortal man. A man that has his breath in his nostrils. Created man. A man with flesh and blood. He said, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? When it gets to that level, the battle is no more yours. The battle is the Lord's. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego realized, so they answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, they called him by name. O Nebuchadnezzar. They said, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Be careful for nothing. But with prayer and supplication, thanksgiving, make all your requests known unto the Lord. We are not careful. We are not worried. We are not perplexed. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so that you want to do what you are going to do, our God, whom we serve, is able. Is he still able today? He said, I am God, I change not. He is able to deliver us from the burning, furry furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, if not, be it known unto thee that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, he was angry before, now he was really angry. Nobody ever challenged his authority. Nobody ever responded or answered him back. Full of fury and the form of his visage changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace once seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning furry furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosing, 
and their hearts and their overcoming and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fires slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Don't be among the people fighting against God's children. It's very dangerous. Don't be among the people that are tying them, throwing them into any for persecution. Very dangerous for you. Verse 23, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning furry furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and he rose up in haste, and spake and said to his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto him, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like, is like, is like, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. As I was with Moses before Pharaoh, even so will I be with you. And no man shall be able to stand before you. In a time of temptation, the Lord is able to keep us. He will keep us in Jesus' name. He's able to preserve us during the time of persecution. Our time is going. Number four, provision for all needs. Provision for all needs. You see, there are times when we feel that we need some provision. And maybe our parents do not have enough to give us. Or maybe they have enough and this is still part of the persecution. And they say, go and tell Jesus. Go and tell church. Go and take it from your Bible. Go and take it from your new born again religion. At such a time, what do you do? Does that mean that education is going to come to an end? Does that mean that we will not be able to sail through? Of course, we're going to get through. Because God is going to provide for all our needs. In Psalm 27, verse 10, When my mother, my father, and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. If my mother and my father will withdraw the scholarship, Scholarship will come from God. If there is uh, no bursary, no allowance, I believe that the Lord can provide for our needs. Because Psalm 20, 37 tells us, Psalm 37, verse 25, I have been young, now I am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. We will not beg. The Lord will provide for us. If you are saying, well, when my father was alive, he could have done all these things. But now, my uncle is not cooperating with the family. And uh, all that my father left, that they should have used to take care of us, they are not using it to take care of us. And so I am suffering. Even my widowed mother, it's not uh, getting the support and the sustenance. What can God do? Once again, how big is your God? Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 11. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive. If you think you're an orphan, you're not really an orphan. You may not have an earthly father or earthly mother, but God is your heavenly father now. And he's able to supply all your needs, and he will supply. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive. How about the widows? Let thy widows 
trust in me. If you trust in the Lord, and if the widows trust in the Lord, what will the Lord do? Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply. Will he supply? All your need. Will he supply all your need? According to the economy of the country. I saw that's what's there. Because our students tell us we cannot uh, do anything now because of the economy. My daddy lost his job. My mommy, where the, she was selling the market, the fire burnt uh, the, the market. I thought it says, my God shall supply all your need according to the economy of the nation. You say that in your Bible? Why are you then thinking like that? Why are you then complaining like that? Why are you planning like that? Why do you why don't you know that heaven will never go bankrupt? Whatever may happen to some of the banks in the country, and whatever may happen in retrenchment, our God will still supply. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I believe. He will do it. Number five, healing for all sicknesses. Healing for all sicknesses. You know, when we talk about sicknesses, uh, sicknesses actually vary. Um, I still remember the case of a father. He had um, four children, and one of them in particular dropped out of school. The, the teachers gave uh, a report to that uh, child in secondary school and then he said this child should not come back that the child could not get anything in class at all and i still remember vividly now how that father at the end of our thursday meeting in lagos here he came as if he wanted to see me for counseling and his four children followed him and so he uh, said, good evening, Pastor. I said, good evening. He said, I just want my children to uh, shake your hand. So I said, that's good for little children. Uh, so I shook the first one. Then he commanded, ordered the second one. It was like a military kind of thing. Shake the pastor. And so uh, the second one shook my hand. Then the third one. Then the fourth one. Then the father said, thank you, Pastor. I'll come back for a testimony. I didn't even know what the problem was. So he took the child back to school and said, hey, please, try this child for only one semester. And I believe that everything will be all right. So the teacher said, this child is a waste of time. Apart, apart from being a waste of our time, it's a waste of your own resources. Let him go and learn something like tailoring what can be done with the hand. And the father said, please, Grant me this indulgence. Try him for just this short period. They said, all right, there's no harm. And they put him in that same class. At the end of that period, he became third in the class. The Lord touched his brain. Everything became all right. And then the father came to me. And then he gave a testimony. We didn't even pray. All he told those children is, shake the pastor's hand. And I didn't even know the purpose they were shaking the pastor's hand. And yet that happened. I believe God is still able to do it. Psalm 103. From verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth? How many of your iniquities? How many? All thine iniquities. And who healeth? How many of our diseases? All thy diseases. They tell us that uh, we inherited some kinds of sicknesses. They said that this one passed from the father, passed from the mother, and they said that this one is incurable. 
There is no incurable disease in the sight of God. He heals all thy diseases. And you know the, the way the Lord works, it even surprises me. Uh, you might have had this testimony before I was um, traveling somewhere. And then we were on transit. We got down from the plane to join another plane. And here a woman um, saw me and I said, are you Pastor so and so? I said, yes, by the grace of God. Oh, I've been trying to get appointment in Lagos. It's so difficult to see you in Lagos. And so she said, give me appointment so that if I come, those uh, ushers in the church will not hinder me. I said, what well, are you looking for appointment? Then she said, because I have a great, great problem. The doctor said I will never have a child. And therefore, I need the appointment so that when I see you, you can really pray. Really pray. Because this one requires real prayer. So I said, why are you looking for another appointment when there is appointment here? As she said, on the tarmac. That is at the airport where you are walking from the plane and you are going to another. I said, yes, this is the appointment. Oh, she said, can God answer prayer like that? I said, very simple. We are the people that make prayer complicated. So she said, how do we do it? I said, don't close your eyes because, you know, it was in the open. And we had our luggages. And we couldn't kneel down or anything. And so as we were going, I said, oh, Lord, this woman uh, says that the doctor says she'll never have a child. And therefore, give her the child she wants through her husband in Jesus' name. And uh, we still did that walking. Other people are also walking with us. So I said, bye-bye. You've got your miracle. Let me hear about you later. So we forgot all about it. And one year later, she came to see me in Lagos there and said, Pastor, do you remember me? I said, not quite. I meet many people. So she said, I'm the one that saw you. Then she mentioned the country. I said, yes, I remember. She said, this is the child. The Lord had answered the prayer. You see, whatever problem it is that we have, the Lord is able to heal, and He will heal you in Jesus' name. In Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20, He sent His word, and He healed them. He sent His word, as His word is coming to you tonight, healing is coming to you as well. And He delivered them from their destructions, the things that are trying to destroy you, that are trying to take away your joy, your strength, your happiness. The word of the Lord will take everything away in Jesus' name. You know the ministry of Jesus. You know how he healed the sick. And just before he left, he told his own disciples, telling them, do you see all these miracles that are taking place? The sick have been healed. The blind have had their eyesight given to them. The deaf, they have received their hearing. And you see the miracles and the wonders God has done. Then Jesus told them that they will do the same thing. Do you know that after we minister tonight, that you, the minister, will pass to your own hand. And the same thing I believe you are going to do in Jesus' name. And there is no, there is no difficulty, there is nothing about it. You see, and sometimes when I watch some people, they make healing so complicated. And they feel that they must do this and do this. Uh, you know, somebody, one of these university people some years ago, he was saying that he discovered the way to heal the sick. And the way to get the word of knowledge. And the way to get the word of wisdom. I thought he was going to give me something out of scripture. He said, if he turned his head at an angle of 45 degrees, and then he made his mind to be blank, and then he said, particular hallelujah, a number of times, and so he said, the revelation will, I said, go your way, don't confuse me. Because it's simpler than that. Because Jesus didn't need all those things that these people were doing. And see what he said in John chapter 14 verse 12. He said, verily, verily. That means assuredly, assuredly. It means certainly, certainly. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do also. Do you believe in the Lord? Do you really believe in the Lord? 
the works I do, he shall do. Then he said something, and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go unto my Father. I believe it will be so. Then we go on to number six, deliverance from demonic power. There are people that are tormented by demonic power. And uh, sometimes they get their deliverance, and because they do not know how to keep that deliverance, that sin comes again. But I believe that, as we about the message last night, and we have been ministered to, your deliverance will be permanent in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. From verse 17, you read that later on your own, all through to verse 27. Let me just read from verse 20. And he besought him, and he brought him unto him. That is, he brought the epileptic, lunatic, tormented child boy unto the Lord. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit cheered him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed for me. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And of times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. He shifted it on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Lord, can you do anything in this case? Can you do anything in this situation? If you can do anything, then Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe. Are you believing God tonight? If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And then Jesus commanded that that spirit shall come out of him, verse 25, and enter no more into him no more into him. In fact, in many of the places where the Lord has sent me uh, recently now, many, many things happen there. And uh, not only that they happen at the time that I was there, the thing continues to happen even after I have left. Um, I was uh, hearing the testimony from our state overseer in Aqua Ibom. Uh, we, we had finished the meeting and uh, we had prayed and a lot of things had happened. And there was a man there that was blind. And it appeared that he had not got his uh, sight after we ended the meeting. He got back home and the villagers were saying, you didn't get anything. Ah, he said, don't talk. I have not come back from Uyo yet. Only my body came back, but my spirit is still in that meeting. They said, but you don't have your side. I said, because the meeting for me has not ended yet. That they only close the meeting to you, and then you only see me here now when I come back really. I have not come back. When I come back really, you will know that my miracle is there. They thought, look at this madman. That we are only thinking that his eyes are blind. Maybe he even has something wrong in the upstairs. And so, uh, Second day, nothing happened. They said, are you not back? He said, no, I didn't come back yet. That I'm still in the meeting now. And then on the third day, all of a sudden, the eyes opened. And then he began to tell them, now I have come back from Uyo. Because now here is my miracle. That you can see the face of such people that believe that although they said the last amen there, although they sang the last song there, although they gave the last message there, I know that I am still going to get my own, and I believe you will get it. And then Jesus already has passed that power onto every one of us in Luke chapter 10. Luke Chapter 10 from verse 19. He says, Behold, I give unto you power. Will you receive it? I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions 
and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, at a weary, there was uh, this uh, woman with witchcraft and sorcery. She heard that we were having a meeting there. And then she got herself equipped in her evil power. And then came to the meeting. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think she was saying that uh, when she, she was sent to that meeting so that when I come on the platform, all the things I wanted to say and the way I wanted to minister that I will forget. They, they don't understand. That this power we are talking about is the power that created the universe. They don't understand. That this one we are talking about is the one that raised the dead body of Jesus Christ from the grave. They don't understand that this power is the one that is holding the universe in place. And so she said she was saying. So that while I'm preaching I will forget what I was trying to say. And so she came to the meeting. And then I preached fine, fine, without forgetting what I should have said. And then she said, okay, the next thing is that she will try so that whatever power I was trying to manifest to heal the sick, that will not work. Again, she failed. Well, eventually, to, to cut a long story short, she surrendered, she repented, she gave her life to the Lord and came to confess openly. Our God is still able to do it today. And this thing I'm telling you just happened recently this year, just a few months ago. The Lord says, Behold, I give unto you power. You will get that power. You will tread on serpents and scorpions. And you live your life without fear. You live your life without timidity. If it were possible for you to see the devil face to face, you'll say, Mr. Devil, get out of there. I want to pass that way. They will, they will give you a chance. All those witches, all those wizards, all those people with familiar spirits, they will get out of the way you will pass in Jesus' name. Because he has given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And then he says, over all the power. What percentage of power remains for the enemy now? What percentage remains? You have got authority over 100% of the power of the devil. Then he says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. 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 You know, young, young people, I see young people, Christians, if we are serving uh, porridge, the young fellow will say, I don't eat porridge. When we are serving beans, young people will say, I don't eat beans. If we are serving gari, young, young person will say, I don't eat gari. If the devil has taken all the food in the world away from you, what do you eat? We had a um, lot supper here. One of our national overseers was telling me just this afternoon, um, when, the, when they came from French-speaking countries, and this man that came, a Christian, a, be a believer, the devil had been cheating him. He, didn't, he wouldn't take salt, and there was another thing he wouldn't take. And then we were serving the Lord's Supper. And as a believer, he needed to take part in that Lord's Supper. But there was a bit of salt in the preparation of the uh, unleavened bread. And he couldn't avoid it, and yet he knew that he shouldn't be taking salt. But by faith, he took that uh, Lord's Supper, and from that night, he has been taking salt. All that he couldn't take before, everything now is okay. You see, from tonight, nothing shall by enemies hurt you. And after we pray tonight, all the things they, they said you shouldn't eat yam. Can you, can you think of a Nigerian that they said you should, shouldn't eat yam? And shouldn't eat all the good things that, that will keep your body and keep you strong? You will eat and enjoy. It is a... This is our father's territory. And this is our father's land. And we have authority. We are going to subdue everything in Jesus' name. 
and although time is gone, there's an interesting bus I need to show you. Maybe you know it already, but maybe you don't know it. Who knows? Should I tell you? If I tell you everything, why preach tomorrow now? Second Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1. I know you'll pray for me. I'll still get something to preach. Uh, so I'll tell you. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death? And doth deliver and in whom we trust will yet deliver us. You know what interests me in that verse is Past tense, present tense, and future on that word deliver. That in the past, he delivered us. And right now in the present time, he does deliver. And when you use English like that, you are making it emphatic. Instead of just saying he delivers, you are saying he does deliver. You make it emphatic. And then in whom we trust. That even in the future, he will yet deliver us. There is no problem for you. There's no problem. It's the devil that has problem. We who are children of God, all those things, they have been taken care of. And then, number seven, protection in all circumstances. Protection in all circumstances. The servant of Elisha woke up in the morning. And then he saw the chariots and the soldiers that came to take Elisha from Assyria and said, my father, what are we going to do? And then he just said, there's nothing to worry about. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. Do you know that? That the Holy Ghost in us is more than the evil spirit in the familiar spirit gale. Do you know that Christ in you, the hope of glory, is greater than the herbalist that is outside? Do you know that they that be with us, they that fear the Lord, the angel of the Lord encompass round them that fear the Lord and delivereth them. They that be with us are actually greater and more, more powerful and mighty than they that be with them in Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. Is, is He your refuge? The avenger of blood will not be able to catch you. He is my fortress. Is He your fortress? My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. It shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. It shall not come near you. You know, they tell us whenever we have little weakness or little sickness, ah, they say you are coughing blood. That's the thing that kills so and so. That time she was in the second year, she died like that. And then they say that ah. That's the sickness to have. Ah. I remember one a young man. He was in this campus. That is what killed that man. That's only true. Anymore. Oh yes, I remember one now. He, he, I, before I came to this campus, that's the one that, the thing that killed that one. Anymore. They say, those are the three I remember. Ah. Until they reach 11,000, it will not get near me. Because one thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, 
thy habitation, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling, for it shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Here it comes again, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under your feet. All the things that have been troubling you until this night, they are going to come under your feet. You will walk victoriously. You are going to shake off every sickness from your body here tonight. And you will not even sleep with that infirmity tonight in Jesus' name. I need to give you this verse before we pray. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now unto him that is able. The one we are praying to tonight is a God who is able. A God of divine ability. He has never failed. He will never fail. Unto him that is able to do. Able to perform. Able to act. Able to subdue your enemies. Able to heal your sicknesses. Able to deliver you from all attack. Able to protect your life. Able to do. Here it comes. Exceeding. Abundantly. Above all that we may ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. You know, if you, are, uh, if you have thought about the use of language, there are times you have some thoughts in your mind. You do not have words to express what you are saying. You may only be able to think about the kind of victory you want. The power you want, the ability you want, the uh, dominion that you want, the healing you want, and you cannot even describe it. And then it says, God is able to do what you ask, well, that's limited. Then to do what you think, that's limited. He is able to do all that you ask or think, but that's not all. He is able to do above all that you ask or think, but that's not all. He is able to do abundantly above all that you ask or think, but that's not all. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. What's our problem? Why should a child of God be crying as if our God has no more power? Why should we be carrying sicknesses about, infirmities about? Why are you thinking you are going to die young? You are not going to die. You will live to show and manifest the glory of God. You will live till old age. It will be unto you according to your faith. Rise up, it is time for miracles. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight I believe it will be unto you according to your faith. I'm sure you know that the God you serve is a mighty God. He's so mighty there is nothing impossible for him. And as we pray together... You immediately we pray and we just say amen. You should believe that the Lord has actually done it. And I believe the Lord will put a testimony in your mouth in Jesus' name. We're going to pray on quite a number of things. And um, I believe that you will get your own. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. 
If you have any sickness that is visible in your own body, visible to you, like uh, something is swollen and you know it shouldn't be there, it's an abnormal thing, you know it's uh, swollen there in the body, and it's something visible to you that you know, we're going to pray and the Lord is going to remove it in Jesus' name. So if you have any swelling like that, um, we've seen goiter removed, we've seen hunchback removed, we've seen ear removed in many places, we've seen elephantiasis, big legs removed, and other kinds of swellings in the body removed. And if that is your particular peculiar problem, I please want you to just raise up your hand wherever you are. Only those people, only those people. I'll come to others later. Uh, then you lay the other hand on the place where the swelling is. And I'm going to tell you to check up after the prayer. And you are going to be sincere enough to tell us what has really happened. Because our God is a mighty God. As you raise up your hand, identify, locate why the, where that swelling is. Because after the prayer, you shouldn't see it again. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you this time. I thank you for the faith of your people here tonight. We are believing you. And we know that you will not fail. I bring my dear brothers and sisters before you. I pray that at this very time, you touch them, heal them in Jesus' name. That swelling in their bodies. They should not be there. Therefore, I command the swelling, come out of their bodies in Jesus' name. The swelling in any part of the body, private part or visible. Oh Lord, I pray, the swelling will be removed by your mighty hand now in Jesus' name. You swelling in any part of the body of these people resting up their hands, I command you, Get out of their bodies in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. Now those who raise up their hands before, please check out where that swelling was before you raise up your hand. Please check out. We're going to pray for those that have real definite sicknesses. You know that this is a sickness. Either it has pain or it has um, something that uh, makes you to know that this is a sickness. You've gone to the hospital, you've uh, been treated, but you are still sick. And that sickness is here, is there at this present time. We're going to pray. After the prayer, you will not see those Egyptians anymore. So, if you have any definite sickness like that in the body, that you know it has pain, or it may be that they even say it's incurable, there is no incurable disease here tonight. And uh, you feel the pain, you see the suffering, you see the problem there, all that you need to do where you are is to raise up your hand. And you must be sincere because after the prayer, you are going to check out. And that pain has no right to remain. The sickness has no right to remain. Whether it is internal, or it's on your skin, or anywhere, it cannot remain. So, if you have definite sickness like that, that you know. And when it is gone, you will also know. You raise up your hand. And we will pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you because of what you did on the cross of Calvary. You said, it is finished. And therefore these sicknesses have no right to remain on our body. These are the temples of the Holy Ghost. Is it right, O oh Lord, that a falling object, 
something coming from the devil will be taking any position, any place in the temple of the Almighty God, it's not right. It should not be so. Therefore, Lord, I bring these brothers and sisters before you, and I command the stones of the devil in their lives to be broken and destroyed in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh Lord, I pray that every form of sickness in their bodies instantaneously now, immediately now, touch them, remove it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lord, I pray that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, every one of them, every one of them will be healed in Jesus' name. You pain, I command you, by the authority of the Lord, by the power of the Holy Ghost, come out in Jesus' name. You sickness, infirmity, and disease, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that right now you touch them. Right now you heal them. Set them free in Jesus' name. Heal them, Lord. Thank you because I know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, it may be that there is anyone here with one leg shorter than the other. And that short leg has to receive the power of God. And so what we're going to do, please pay attention, what we're going to do is, if you see that you have one leg shorter than the other, uh, please uh, do this, don't mind that your clothes may be dirty, you'll wash your clothes later. Let the people around you give you chance and sit on the ground and stretch your two legs out. Then the people that are near you can look at those two legs and they will see that one leg is shorter than the other. And then we will pray after you have sat on the ground to see that one leg is shorter than the other. If you see that one of your hands is shorter than the other hand, you stretch both hands out and we'll see that one is shorter than the other before we pray. Anywhere in the auditorium, in the halls, please, if one leg is shorter than the other, you will sit on the ground, you stretch the legs out and we'll see that one is shorter than the other before we pray. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for tonight. Tonight is the night of power. It's the night of signs and wonders. You have told us that we bend this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Oh Lord, I come before you. On behalf of these who are stretching out the hands or stretching out the legs. And I pray that your miracle working power will walk in their bodies now in Jesus' name. You short leg, I command you. Grow out in Jesus' name. All the spinal cords. All the waist, all the ankle, all the knees. I pray the power of God will come upon you in Jesus' name. All the hands that are shorter than the other. I command the power of God will come upon you. Go out in Jesus' name. Whatever has caused that deformity, I cancel it. I remove it now by the mighty power of God. And I pray, O oh Lord, those two legs will become equal in Jesus' name. Those two hands will become equal in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
Let's now see those uh, legs and see the power of God upon them. Now, if you've been having problems because of demonic attacks and things moving about in the body, disturbing your brain, you really can't concentrate, and you have all these problems and you know it's because of demonic attack or a curse or a spell or whatever, we're going to pray and the Lord is going to set you free. So if uh, you are in such a problem, you raise up your hand and we're going to pray. And if it's epilepsy, this is your chance. And if it's uh, brain disturbance, this is your chance. And if you're hearing unnecessary noise in your ear, this is your chance. Whatever attack coming from evil spirits, this is your very chance. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you here tonight because we have the heritage of your own children. Healing, deliverance is our redemptive right. And therefore I bring all these people before you. All those disturbances in the mind, disturbances in the brain, I command, come out in Jesus' name. All those objects moving about in the body, I command, be removed in Jesus' name. That epileptic spirit or spirit of insanity or mental disturbance, I command be healed in Jesus' name. You devil, I command you. You cannot remain there. Come out in Jesus' name. All the curse, all the spell, everything the devil has done to torment you and to torture you and to destroy your life. I take authority over those demonic spirits Come out in Jesus' name. Everything disturbing them from reading, disturbing them from making progress, disturbing them from concentrating. Oh Lord, I take authority over them now. Right now I command, be delivered in Jesus' name. They cause from any abalist, they cause from any occultic man, any juju, any occult that they have done against you, I break the yoke. I destroy the power. I set you free. All those who cannot sleep at night, all those who are hearing those noise in the noise in the ear, I command you be delivered in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know it's done. In Jesus' name I pray. In the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The labor of all church workers shall never be in vain, as our Father, the Father of all globally, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kamui, gives us the Global Church Workers Conference live from Taraba State, Nigeria. All church workers and ministers globally to join hands with all ministers across Taraba State, Northern Nigeria from 17 to 20 November 2022. It's our time for triumphing in ministry, even in troublous times. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kubuyi will be ministering 8 a.m. daily from Jalingo, Taraba State, to the world, via satellites and all our social media platforms. It will be an avalanche of global expositions and revelations. Your labor will not be in vain. When we started the year 2022, you had hopes, you had desires, you had dreams, but suddenly, all over the globe, we read and hear of failures economically, politically, with climate change and security breaches here and there. And now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Today, the Lord is saying, weep not. All your tears are dried, because behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the roots of David, 
has prevailed. And it's confirmed that there's still one hope, one way. One solution and one power that never fails. The power of Jesus Christ reverberates this November with GCK Live from Adamawa State, Nigeria. The land of beauty set to beautify your life through Christ. As the covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi will touch down in Adamawa, Nigeria with a power that never fails. Healing, deliverance, salvation. November 24 to 29, 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT for Sunday worship service. Young people from all levels will be empowered for excellence at the Impact Academy on November 26, 2022 at 0600 hours GMT. Ministers and professionals will be empowered for breakthrough in ministry on November 25, 26, 28, and 29 at 0600 hours GMT. Our guest gospel minister is Bob Feets. This is an avalanche of manifestation of the power that never fails. For all lie, power will herald your celebration. Dr. William Kumui says, Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. GCK, the gospel to every creature.